Banner Rehabilitation Hospital East, in a joint partnership with Select Medical and Banner Health, is opening in early spring in Mesa. Join us in providing an exceptional patient care experience that promotes healing and recovery in a compassionate environment. $15,000 sign-on bonus for RNs and $5,000 sign-on bonus for physical therapists. Apply today at careers.selectmedical.com slash banner. That's careers.selectmedical.com slash banner. 30 years ago in the Brooklyn neighborhood of Crown Heights, a car accident set off four days of unrest. Two people died, hundreds were arrested. I'm Collier Meyerson, and my new show, Love Thy Neighbor, explores what came to be known as the Crown Heights Riot. It's a story about New York's first black mayor, the rise of Rudy Giuliani, and the Lubavitch Jewish and Caribbean communities sitting at the center of it all. You can listen to new episodes of Love Thy Neighbor every week wherever you listen, or you can binge the entire series exclusively on Odyssey. Jason and John guests appear via the Landmark Heating and Air phone line, live from the Topps Barbecue Studios on 92.9 FM ESPN. Jason Fitz was hosting Sports Nation this morning on ESPN+. Plus. He does it all for ESPN. Catch him on ESPN Radio. Catch him on ESPN Digital on TV. He joins us every single Monday, and he joins us now. Fitz, you got a chance to uh, talk to a member of the hottest team in the National Basketball Association last week, and Jaron Jackson Jr. What, uh, what did you learn about the Grizzlies uh, from Jaron Jackson Jr. in your conversation? You know, I think there's a, a bond to these guys and the fact that everybody's young. One thing we talked to him about was just sort of what he learned last year missing so much time and coming into this year's team and the bond that they share together. There's a joy, you know, and, and it's funny. For all that we've been talking about everywhere with the Nets and where it went wrong, I think one of the things that we've forgotten is that when you've got the big three for Brooklyn, they all decided that they wanted to play together and have this, like, uh, fun sort of real life globetrotter moment where they love showing up to the arena every night. Think they can they can beat anybody, and there's an energy and a joy to Memphis right now that every team wishes they had. I think it's one of the special moments. How often when a team goes on a really nice run at the end of it, do we say there was something different about that locker room? Even in talking to Jaron Jackson Jr., you could tell that there's just something different in the way these young guys relate to each other, in the in the opportunity they see for who they are, in the fact that. They've now gone from being somebody that maybe gets forgotten to somebody that everybody looks forward to on the schedule. Like, this rise is something you can feel is giving the guys energy, and they, they're loving every second of it. There's a, there's a joy to that, that that we're watching it with the Bengals, too, man. Like, you yeah. see that, that's a tough tough thing to beat. It, it does feel like, you're right, like there's a young, you know, rock band sort of energy around this group and sort of everybody's sort of catching on. And then it's what they've done on the floor. You made the point, Bengals go all the way to a Super Bowl. How dangerous – you know, watching these Grizzlies, and they almost make you watch them now. Where you, you know, they're on the radar. People talk about them as contenders. How dangerous do you think they can be in the playoffs this year? Yeah, I think they can go on a serious run. And you know, actually, this morning you mentioned I hosted Sports Nation when we were in our production meeting, and we were all talking about, uh, you know, what the East looks like right now. A couple of people said there's only a, you know two good teams in the West, and I was like, whoa, 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 like let's let's expand that thought process a little bit because. I think Memphis can can hang with anybody out of the West right now. It, that's partially because they've got a lot of, I don't even want to say role players, because I think that diminishes. they got guys that they can rely on other than just Ja. And by the way, on any given night, Ja's got a pretty good shot at being the best guy on the floor. So, you know, do they have yep. some issues trying to match up with the team with size? Uh, yeah. Uh, does that really hurt them uh, in, in the playoffs? I don't think so. Like, you know, as great as Golden State is, and I'm not taking anything away from Golden State, it's fun to watch Golden State. I'll put them on the tier at the uh, at the top, and for the rest of the West, I think Memphis is right in the, in there. I, I think Memphis can compete with the Phoenixes of the world. Agree, totally. Now, I don't want to blow up your spot here, man. So, if you were going to try to save this for a world premiere, I apologize in advance. But you know, is there a, is there a, a chance that we could see a collaboration between Jaron Jackson Jr. and Grammy Award winning musician Jason Fitz? Could could we see something, you know, laid down very soon? And look, I'm I'm all in, and you know that's the funny. Everybody talks about my country music roots, which I'm very proud of, but I've also done strings on a bunch of different hip hop records. So you know, when Jaron told us that he's got about 150 tracks and he's going to start putting them out, like I hit the Grizzlies PR people up afterwards and said, "Look, you you know, I, I want to play on one of his records. So let, let's see what's going to happen here." Like 
you know, I'll do something cool in the back. Like, look at your, you know, I know he's a divisive person, but if you look back at some of those really strong Kanye records, yep. a lot of strings on that stuff, man. A lot of strings. So, you know, I feel like Dre uses a lot of strings. Like, I feel like even though people assign me to country music because of my past, you got to remember, like, strings are universal to all different genres. So let's go, Triple J. Like, what are you, <laughs> as somebody that's, like, been the best in the world at their craft, um, I'm assuming you're, you're an inclusive guy when it comes to making music and, and, and people wanting to make music. I used to roll my eyes when I would see athletes do this, you know, but it does feel like, you know, whether it's Dame or, or, like, there are some who actually do take it seriously and are not terrible at it. Do you roll your eyes when athletes do it, or do you like it? No, I, so I'm sort of in the middle, and I didn't have time to ask him in the interview, but I'm genuinely curious because Memphis does have such a notable hip-hop community. Like, I wonder how that community actually embraces, you know, an NBA player that's out there doing it. But you, Dame's a good example of guys that have, have been able to do so much that now you realize people can be more than just, you know, what they are. But, you know, every time an, a, an artist tries to play basketball, we all roll our eyes at that and, how often do we see uh, you know athletes try and be actors? So I think the one thing about music that makes it difficult for a lot of guys is that to actually carve out a, a long career in the music business, it's a 24-7 job, just like playing in the NBA. So I don't know that you could do justice to both, but I think we're seeing more and more guys give that respect because, frankly, how many hip-hop artists are NBA fans and how many NBA fans are hip-hop artists? Just like country music and college football, like, the reason Kenny Chesney's on every field he can ever be on with the jerseys because he loves being a college football fan, you know. So I think that's reciprocated. I think there's opportunity for athletes to become good hip-hop artists if they want to invest the time when they're done playing. Let, since we're on music, let me ask you this. Uh, is there enough time for Dre, Snoop, Eminem, Mary J, Kendrick Lamar, when you've got that kind of star power you know, for us to all come away satisfied for the performers themselves, Jacob. I mean, uh, uh, of Jason, because it feels like it's gonna get it's gonna get squeezed. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they pulled it off perfectly. But you tell me, pulling off a production like that with that kind of star power seems like it's gonna be awfully tough. Yeah, it is. And my my whole concept of this is like, better be a Dre fan because Dre is the creative. You know, and I've been a part of some of these in the past. And you know, a typical halftime performance like this gives you a little over twelve minutes. It'll be timed down to the second. So yep. what Dre has been doing in the studio, I'm presuming with all of these artists, has been working the entire track out to the second So on exactly how much each artist is going to get. But like, I have a hard time seeing Mary J get more than just a chorus here or a chorus right. there. And I have a hard time seeing like you know Eminem getting more. Like When you start looking at the list of names that are involved in this and you just make a hierarchy of popularity, that's why I think it's funny a lot of people have asked about, you know, will there be a... Uh, will there be a hologram of Tupac for California Love, which is a great idea. But then I look over and I'm like, you have legend after legend exactly. after legend after legend alive in person in this performance. Like, just, just use the people you got and appreciate the people that are with you for. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of, uh, my hope is that Drake can make it cohesive. But I think a lot of fans of individual artists will be disappointed when it's done because they won't be there won't be a lot of time for any of them. I think I, I promise we're going to ask sports questions, but I am curious to get your opinion. What's the last good? And you have you have a unique perspective on this. The last good, objectively good halftime show at the Super Bowl. I, I mean, I thought Bruno Mars and the Red Hot Chili Peppers was sure. a good performance. Uh, Prince was an all timer for me, you know, and so that that doesn't feel like it's that long ago. Other although it is, uh, you know, the hardest part with it. Honestly, like I was at the Super Bowl where Katy Perry performed, and I remember there were a couple of uh, girls sitting behind us that were like massive Katy Perry fans, and they were screaming the whole first half, can't wait, can't wait, can't wait. And then she came out and did her performance, and because her songs just don't, like they don't go hard enough, everything sort of had a mid-tempo vibe in the arena, in the stadium, it fell flat. And the two people that were behind me that were mega fans are like, eh, at the end of it. I think that happens a lot of times. Like they try and cater to these big shows that are going to make it a spectacle, but the songs got to all this rage. They're, that's why Bruno works with Red Hot Chili Peppers because he kept everything so upbeat that you just you had to jump up and down the entire time. I, I think that makes for a great – unless you're playing Purple Rain, there's no reason to slow down a, a halftime performance. So, you know, I, I think that, you know, that's the trick for it, but that's where having a lot of artists give you opportunity. That's why, like, in the 90s, the Aerosmith, in sync, Britney one, like it worked because they were all playing banger after banger, right? Like, so it it works for tempo. So I think they're going to have to make sure they have a lot of that in this one. 
Fitzy, will you be shocked if it's Joe Burrow that's holding up the, the, the trophy after the Super Bowl and not the Rams at this point? I, I won't be shocked, but I will say this. I, I do think we are undervaluing Aaron Donald. I, that, like Aaron Donald's the most important person in this entire game because while the, the Bengals' offensive line has just been destroyed a, a bunch over the last couple of weeks and we've all talked about it, mm-hmm. they've never seen anybody like Aaron Donald. And you know, I made the joke the other day that Aaron Donald might as well be introduced with the starting lineup for the Bengals because he's going to be in the backfield the whole day. And I do think that's a disruptor. Now, you know, I, I will say Burrow's been able to handle every disruption and every hit and take it from every single angle. But, man, I just think we're underselling Aaron Donald in this matchup. I want the Bengals to win. I, I just don't trust that offensive line to hold up. I think I think this is the Rams game to lose. It, it feels like the Bengals are just too trendy a pick, I'll be honest. Like, it's just one of those things where I think everybody wants them to win because, like, just the story and, and, and Joe Burrow and just the, the radiance and the swag. But I also feel like they're totally ignoring a team on the other side that you mentioned was – constructed for this vi- the Bengals were not supposed to be here they are here congratulations to them but the Rams were basically genetically engineered to be in this moment and to win this and that's why I think they will yeah you're right and you know if we just look at the roster as a whole I don't think you can make the argument that there isn't more talent with the with the Rams it's a more proven and I think more talented coaching staff so you know I, I trust the coaches I trust the players uh, do I trust Matt Stafford 100%? No, but do I think that there's going to be some element of Joe Burrow facing things he's never imagined? Yeah, so, you know, I, I, I could see both teams playing a little sloppy through all of this, but I, I just I have a hard time thinking that much talent falls short in a Super Bowl at home in their stadium in a facility they know where they didn't have to travel and they've been sleeping in their own beds. Like, there's just a million little nuances mm-hmm. that I think play to the Rams' strengths. We're talking to Jason Fitz. Catch him on Spade and Fitz. Catch him all over ESPN. Joins us every single Monday here on the show. I don't know that we have talked to you yet about Tom Brady and his official retirement. Do you think it's really over for him? Or, or do you think there's at least a sliver of a chance he gets that itch week six when some star quarterback goes down and he's just sitting around the house? Jason says, mm-mm, on the other side, where are you? Yeah, no, I think he's out. He's out 100%. And, uh, because the last thing in the world he wants is to come back into a situation where it isn't perfect for him, mm. and he's such a workaholic for everything. And the other part of it is, like, I joke about this all the time, but, my God, let's remember – Tom Brady makes their fun money in that house. Like, he makes the vacation money because Giselle makes the real money. That's and right. we've known for a long time that Giselle was like, I'm done with you playing. I think finally he's, he, he now has to sit back and be like, okay, this is what the boss actually wants. And what she wants, she's going to get because, you know, we don't need the money. And you know, he's got kids getting older and all the different variables that come into it when you're his age and you don't have to play. And, and the other side is, Somebody will pay him an astronomical amount to be on TV, too, which is a pretty cush gig for guys like him. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I I just can't see there being an incentive that lets him come back and be great in the situation that he knows he can be great in. Hey, if you're a free agent quarterback, which one you want? You want Tampa or you want Pittsburgh, Jason? Oh, that's a great question. I want Pittsburgh. I want Look, Mm -hmm. if if I'm a free agent anything, I want Pittsburgh because the the dumpster fire that had been there personality-wise hasn't kept them from winning games. Mike Tomlin can hold up through anything. And they even managed to be a a fringe playoff team with terrible quarterback play. Like the, the, the ability to get a lot out of a little is really significant there. Bruce Arians might be more fun to play for. Tampa might be a more fun place to be. But, no, nah, I'm taking the Steelers. I'm with you. We are, of course, talking to Jason Fitz. He joins us every single Monday here uh, on the show. Got to ask you about the story that's, you know, hanging over the NFL right now, which is obviously the, the lawsuit of, of – Brian Flores doesn't sound like he's going to get the gig there in Houston. Um, do, does this create lasting change? Um, what 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 sort of chance do you give it that it does? You know, the NFL has already kind of sort of changed their tune, right? You saw Goodell's comments yesterday or the day before um, about how seriously they, they they're going to take it now. What do you think um, is, is the fallout uh, or, or the impact of of this lawsuit? I think that this is going to be a black eye on the NFL for a decade. And, and you know, I, I believe that because Brian Flores knew the minute he filed a lawsuit that it would be likely that he'd never get to work in the NFL again. So now what's it about for him? Is it about money or is it about change? And he's made it really apparent and evident that this is about change. And if it's about change, this lawsuit can only have three different solutions. One is a settlement for a ton of money. doesn't seem like he's interested in that. Two is it, it goes to court 
and we get every ounce of information known through man through all of this process. Three is that the NFL just tries to find a way to bury it in appeals. I can't find anybody that tells me that it can be buried. So if he's not willing to take a settlement, it's going to go to court. And if it goes to court, we're all going to know every ounce of every dirty secret through all of this, which is the one thing the NFL constantly avoids. It's why they wanted to go to arbitration. Same reason they want the Gruden lawsuit to go to arbitration, because arbitration remains private. But I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm looking at a bunch of people right now that are incentivized for change, and that's power. Like when, when, when you don't give a damn about your own pocketbook and when you don't care about anybody being able to buy you out of getting real information, you become the worst nightmare for the NFL. I think uh, between that and the congressional hearings going on, the NFL is about to have to face the ugly reality that they can't bury the truth from everybody. We're going to find out there's a lot of bad people that knew a lot of bad things that have done a lot of bad things, and the NFL doesn't want that. Hey, Fitz, man, great stuff as always. We yeah, appreciate man. We know you're rumping and running. Thanks, for, uh, Thank as you, always. Thank you, Have a great time, week. Uh, thank you. Have a great week. Appreciate you guys. Yep, he is Jason Fitz joining us every single Monday here on the show. We'll come back, wrap this up on a Monday. Jason and John, Artie Turner, FM, ESPN. Healthcare professionals in the Valley, are you looking for an exciting new opportunity? Banner Rehabilitation Hospital East in Mesa is opening in the spring of 2022. We are hiring for registered nurses, physical therapists, occupational therapists, dietary and housekeeping positions. $15,000 sign-on bonus for RNs and $5,000 sign-on bonus for therapists. Your new career is waiting. Apply today at careers.selectmedical.com slash banner. That's careers.selectmedical.com slash banner. This month on the 11th. I love the way you walk. I love it when you're really goofy on the phone and you sing everything. Carvel and Rasham live on opposite sides of the country. They're both writers. They're both parents. So... They find ways to talk about their love whenever they can. I really love your voice. They shared their letters and voice memos with us. That's this month on the 11th. Listen now on Odyssey, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. Netflix, Amazon Prime, HBO, Showtime. How many streaming services are you paying for? If only there was a way to track and cancel subscriptions easily. Well, there is. Just download the Truebill app. Truebill organizes your subscriptions by due date and notifies you when something is coming up. From there, decide whether to keep it or cancel it with just a tap in the app. To find out more about Truebill, go to truebill.com slash music or download the Truebill app from the Apple app or Google Play stores. Truebill, the money app that works for you.